when we plot it, it was just phenomenal. All the three spectra just line up. Is is this is this fantastic proof of uh, you know just robustness? And to us, that was that's when it struck that actually we may be seeing something real here. And then of course, in that process, I had already done like a preliminary analysis, and I was seeing these uh, molecules, and and it was just all over again. You can't stop that uh, that experience. And the molecules are of what? So the. Uh, Originally, in our 2023 study, we said there may be a hint of dimethyl sulfide, but we were not very confident. But this time, we are seeing, um, we were also like seeing a dimethyl sulfide signature, but we, um, in the meanwhile, uh, in the last two years, there were several other studies, there was at least one other important study that came out predicting several other molecules that could also be present mm -hmm. um, in, in the atmosphere. So we included all of that in our analysis. And we were seeing that we tried like 20 different molecules and we were picking up one. That was dimethyl disulfide, which is a sister molecule, which is very similar to dimethyl sulfide. And we said, what if we remove this molecule from our exploration? And then we were picking up DMS. And then if you remove both those molecules, we don't pick up anything else. And that is when it struck us that we must be seeing one or the other or both of these yeah. molecules. Both of them are biomarkers here on Earth. And the reason that, is it dimethyl sulfide? DMS, yes. the reason that that is so significant to be seen in the quantities that you are seeing it absolutely, is because it is a gas that is only produced by, by life on Earth. Yeah. By life on Earth. Now, when we talk about life, do we mean uh, what, what type of life do we, are we potentially so, looking so at? So a lot of the DMS is produced by microorganisms in the Earth's oceans, like phytoplankton, algae. So... We're talking about simple microbial life. That that's our baseline. Um, and when sorry, when on, on Earth that is the case, and we and it has also been these molecules have also been predicted to be robust biomarkers on other planets. Uh, mm -hmm. That these over the last two decades, people have said there are various molecules that life produces on Earth, but a lot of them can have non-biological false positives from other mechanisms. Right. So these were the molecules that were selected where people said, no, if you looked at these molecules and you found them, that should be a definitive evidence for life. And then we're seeing signals of those. Yeah. And that's remarkable. Yeah. So this, um, and I think I'm right in saying that a year ago when we spoke to you, you were um, pretty convinced that the amount of uh, dimethyl sulfate actually was greater than on Earth. Absolutely. And that's uh, what we're finding again. Really? Okay. Yeah, so one important thing to note here is that these observations are completely independent from the previous observation. There is no overlap. I see. Okay, right. We didn't use that information at all. These are completely independent. So, when we spoke to you last year, you said the chances of, of, of finding life is about fifty percent. How certain are you now that this gas is uh, redolent of there being life on that planet, Professor? Yeah, so so it is, as I said last time, it is always very difficult to put numbers on these kinds of things. So so it, it would, we wouldn't have those exact numbers. What we can say is a significance or like how confident are we that this molecule is, is there in the atmosphere. So at this point, nominally, we are at a over 99% a over confident that the molecule is there. But that is not enough for a big scientific <laughs> breakthrough. What? Yeah, no, no. For a big scientific breakthrough, we are looking at a level of confidence where the chance of the signal being fluke has to be less than one part in a million. Wow. Yeah, it has to be that much for us to really convince ourselves that there is no other, nothing else that we can explain this. So, so, so we are happy with that. We, we are happy to go that route. Uh, but to me, the biggest breakthrough is not whether we have detected evidence for life or not the bigger breakthrough as a civilization as a society is that we have evolved to a level where we have the technology ready now and operational where we can detect these sorts of life if it's out there and that's a big 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 step because if you asked anyone in the field five years ago when can we realistically detect life the answer you would get is order 20 years People would say, oh, in 20 years, we would have the next generation of facilities. We could be detecting biosignatures with JWST. We'll test the grounds. But here we are saying we can do that now. 
I'm going to ask you to be um, deeply unscientific for a second, Professor. So there you are saying that 99.7% confident that this is the gas that you say it is, but that might not be indicative of life because we can't prove that yet because we need the one in, you know, one part in a million, what have you. I bet when you go to bed at night with this knowledge that you have and you allow your mind to wander, you picture this planet that you've been studying. What do you see? So uh, what I see may be different from what I hope <laughs> it, it would be. Most of the time, I'm hoping that the signal goes away. <laughs> Most of it, because that's where our efforts are usually. And that is why it took us so much time, because all this time we were just trying to kill the signal. Um, so I hope that, you know, if the signal isn't there, um, if, if, if the molecule isn't there, I hope we find that out uh, as soon as possible. But so far, we have not been a, not been successful at that. Um, so the signal is continuing to stay there. Um, but also, I want to like clarify one small thing. It's not 19, over 99 percent chance of it being there being life. It's the 99 plus 99 point seven percent chance of the molecule being mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But then there is a whole another set of questions on whether this molecule can be uniquely associated with life in that environment. Mm -hmm. So far, as you also pointed out earlier, the amounts we are seeing of this molecule, these molecules at that level of confidence means that currently, as, be, as far as current knowledge is concerned in the entire field from the last several decades, there is no other way we know we can make this molecule at that level. Yeah. But that does not mean that tomorrow we could come up yeah, With there might be a new explanation, sure. There might be a new explanation, but, so we want to remain open to that. So, yes. they, so we have to be very, very careful. You're being there. very cautious, but I, I guess my point was, when you think about this planet, do you see oceans of water? Do you see sort of teeming uh, plankton and phytoplankton? What, how do you picture it? Yeah, so so I've, I've gone slightly beyond that. So, <laughs> so to me... <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to dream, Professor, with this discovery, I think. So, so to, to me, the planet is merely a laboratory of a cosmic process. So, so to me, <laughs> life is not confined to one planet. Uh, life is a process. So I think more along the lines, if there is, I mean, when you look at the night sky, to me, right now, the night sky, for most people, would be the physical sky with physical entities, inanimate objects, planets, stars, galaxies, but the implication if we actually detect life is that you look at the night sky as a living universe and that's a paradigm shift so most of the time in in my thinking the the concept is more how do how does one reconcile with the universality of biology how does one reconcile with the universe being full of life right so that's a much bigger and broader question a more fundamental question than whether how whether life exists on this particular yeah. planet or yeah. what it looks like. So it has transcended like the confines of, of the planet itself. A, a re-understanding of what life is. Exactly, a fundamental uh, shift.